Well, I believe it is about time for a starter. I had this issue the other day. We got battery voltage. We're gonna have to order a starter, I believe. I just need this thing to run. Hear the starter clicking down there. No dice. Uh, I guess I'm gonna have to beat on it. Let me open the hood and try to beat on it. All right, let's see if I can reach it down there. I don't know that I can with this. The other day I beat on it with a long bar. That may be what I have to do today because I don't think I can reach it with that. Let's try this flatbed winch bar here. If that don't work, I'll have to uh, go in the shop there and get my tamping bar. At least I'm at home. Try it now. Come on, you got places to go. Truck don't want to. I can hear that starter solenoid down there bumping by my foot, sound like. Yeah, she ain't wanting to do. I don't think we're going to make it happen. Well, I guess I can grab that bigger bar and try to hit it a little harder and see what happens. All right, I got a more appropriate size bar here. I'm gonna try that. Uh, I'm gonna have to probably set you guys down though because uh, I can't hold this bar and hold the camera also. 
Let's try again. I wish I had somebody to bump that while I was trying to start it, but I don't. I think it might have cranked its last crank. What do you think? Wonderful. Well, I don't know if I can figure out a way to uh, get some air out here from a shop, get the brakes to release, and uh, try to pull start this thing somehow by myself. That's going to be nice. Alright guys, this is an air hose that uh tear up your tires with, that hooks on your glad hand on the back of your truck. Um, I pulled the air fitting off of it, or the air truck off of it, put this fitting on there, go connect it to my shop air right here, um, like so. And I've got it connected to the glad hand on my trailer right there. I turn the valve off on the compressor over here. Like that. And that should back feed that fitting is leaking it's just hand tight hopefully that'll back feed when I mash my valve in here yeah it's just the uh, trailer line out there the emergency line whatever in theory we should be able to push our valve Hold it down. I should air the truck up. I turn the key on so that we can see the the gauges come up. And that'll air the truck up. Once the truck tanks get aired up uh, and everything, we can disconnect that hose, hook it back to the trailer, and uh, then push that valve back in. And it should uh, air the trailer up and release the brakes on the trailer. In theory, not sure why only one tank is coming up. But we'll see if it's going to work or not. Push the other brake knob in that I heard them release. Still don't have no air in the rear tank though. I don't exactly know how this uh, system works on here. I've never backfed it like that before. My other truck, I had a uh, a line that tapped right into the tank that I could hook uh, air hose up to and turn the valve on and air it up. I'll try the starter just just in case. Oh. That's weird. Got a sometime starter. All that stuff went through. The fixing had to pull start it, and then it decided to start on its own. Ain't that something? 
I'm glad it did because I don't know how I was going to drive my pickup and everything all at the same time, but I was going to try to get something happening. Maybe put something on the accelerator and do it that way. Alright guys, so what I was talking about about the uh, air pressure there is my old truck, I had uh, a line rigged up, I think it was in the rear tank. And when you air the rear tank up, it airs both tanks up. And I think the rear tank uh, has all the suspension stuff in it. And the front one maybe works the brakes or the front tanks works the brakes, I suppose. There's a check valve in there, I know that much. Um, and that way, I guess, if you blow an airbag or something out, you don't lose all your, your brakes is the way these are rigged up, I suppose. Um, so anyway, if you have to hook air and back feed it back through like that, um, it's probably just going to air up the one tank or the front tanks there's actually three tanks on there and uh i'm not exactly sure how they are plumb but uh i think that's the gist of it anyway um i've got a new starter in and uh getting ready to put that on there here in a little while uh, i got a guy supposed to be coming out to replace this windshield um so hopefully he shows up here shortly we'll get that out of the way and then uh, maybe this thing's got one more crank in it um, so I can get it in there in the shop and uh, see about getting that starter replaced. Alright guys, we got the new windshield in there. Thanks to clear. I can't even tell it's there. But it's there. Anyway, now it's time to get the starter put on there. Um, it did have one more start left in it. Got it pulled in the shop here and uh, everything. I don't know what the easiest way to get to it is. I got the wheels turned that way and parked on a block. I'm not sure what the easiest way to uh, to go about this is or if there is an easy way. I'm kind of dreading it. It ain't but three bolts, but it's hard to get to. This is the new starter. I bought the uh, premium version right there, the 150 MT. Uh, the other starters are 39 MT. Uh, they got a couple different part numbers uh, right here, depending on what what voltage and what truck it fits. But this is supposed to be the correct one for my truck. At least I hope so. Because that's what I got. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if I can get the other one off of there. Probably not going to be able to film much, but there's only three bolts to it. I've changed one of these one time before, um, and this top bolt down in here, you can't really get to, but it sets up like this. you gotta got to go in behind the solenoid with a long extension to get to this bolt right here, and uh, you can get to your wires and all that. So anyway, I'm going to uh, see if I can get started on this as bad as I hate to. All right, guys, I finally got that thing to break loose. I got uh, three extensions, a swivel, and a ratchet with about a two-foot piece of pipe on it in order to uh, get it broke. I thought I was going to break the ratchet or something other to the swivel before I got it broke loose. It's about all I could do to pull on it hard enough to get it to break. But it finally broke loose, so let's see if I can get that out of there. And save the easiest one down on the bottom for last. All right, so I've got the bolts out of it. I've got it tilted down there. Let's see if I can get out of the light. Um, that one bolt that's hard to get to is still sticking in the starter, but it's out of the block. I've got to get to that wire right there and take it loose. Everything else is off. Once I get that wire off, um, it should tilt down and it come on out of there. Well, that's just great. Focus camera. Broke the tip off the screwdriver. That's a cobalt. Oh well, now we've got a snap on. I think I'm going to have to go get it. I believe it is in the house. Alright, there's a snap on. I'm going to try this again up on the truck. Um, it fits that one good. I don't know if the one on the truck has got uh, the same hex head on it too if it does 
I may have to uh, try a wrench. It's all covered in dirt and grease, and it's hard to see or feel. But I'm gonna try this, and if this don't work, I'll see if I can uh, feel tell if it's got a spot to put a wrench on. All right, had to get a wrench out and uh, get it to break loose, and then finish taking it out with the uh, screwdriver there. So I got the wire loose. Let's see if I can get the uh, the starter to slip down out of the hole there. Hopefully, get it out. And uh, this is a 39 MT. I see the label on it, so it's been replaced before. So it really shouldn't be having an issue. But it's obvious that it is. It ain't no telling when it was replaced, but. I've had the truck for four years and I've never replaced it. I think four years. Something like that. So it was probably on there a little bit before that as well. But I don't know. It should have should have lasted a little longer than that, I would have thought. But anyway. All right, guys. So there they are side by side. This is the new one. That's the old one. Probably ain't much wrong with this starter here. Probably this relay right here. Or the solenoid. One or the other. I don't know, but I don't need the truck to be down while I carry it to a shorter starter shop to be worked on. So we're doing it this way. Um, but that's the part number for that one. It's a 39 MT. And again, this is a 150. The 150 is supposed to be more of a premium starter. And this is more of the basic starter that everybody uses. I don't know what the difference of it is. Um, you can look that up if you if you care to, but this one's supposed to be a little better. And one thing I read said that these are tested to 30,000 cycles, and the 150s are tested to 60,000 cycles. So in theory, should be twice as good, but I don't know if that really translates uh, to anything in, in the real world here because I seriously doubt that that starter's got anywhere near 30,000 cycles on it and it's acting up. So I don't know what the deal is, but uh, we're going to go ahead and get this changed out and get it put back on there. Well, moment of truth. Let's see, uh, does she start? Get some air built back up. Get this thing moved out of here. Call that a garret wrap. <laughs> 